Since why is Lori's factorization incorrect here? Like, because if you like distribute it back out, uh -huh. you'd end up with p squared plus four p plus four. Are we sure that we can't factor it? It's not factorable. Uh, something, something, two numbers that multiply to four. Two can't numbers that multiply two. to four. And what? Can't make two. Can't make two how? By adding. You can't add a two um, with numbers that multiply to four. You either got two and two or one and three. Either way, it's not going to add. Of some good work here, so why would you do that? Why would you rewrite it with a zero B? Because negative nine B plus nine B is zero, so he said zero. Well, he he didn't know this, let's say he didn't know this yet, but he could tell this like this from this right away. Why would he take this and then write it like this? see what he needs to get. Like he needs to get no Bs. So we, we know that we're supposed to multiply to get this number, but a lot of times it's confusing to students when there's not a... Can I shut the door? Are they fun? Are they fun or are they being like... Alright, let's 
assemble a task force. Oh no. You can close the door. A task force to close the door. Go, Abby. Go, Abby. Yeah. Send her letter. <laughs> yeah, come on, Abby. So it's confusing a little bit when there's no B term. You know, how do we handle that? Well, Rick's showing us how we handle that. We don't have to write zero B, but Rick finds it helpful to put that as a placeholder so we realize, ah, okay, so I need to multiply by this and Abby gets the thing. That's what we need. So just to show him that he, to, I guess, to show himself that, let's see, the two numbers, we know we're looking for two numbers here, two numbers need to add to zero. show himself what he needs to add to get, to get zero. And then we see how it factors. We should be fairly good at these simple factoring problems. So list three examples of other expressions containing the zero b or zero x, whatever, that factors like this question. Can we just like use like x squared? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Minus. give it away. Okay. Let, everybody, let everybody think about it. All right. All right. You got to think about it. Don't steal it. So there's a pattern here. If we recognize the pattern, it wouldn't take long to write down more examples. What's the pattern? Um, x squared minus like any number that has a perfect square root. Mm -hmm. Any number that has a perfect square root. Um, so all of these are called a difference of, okay, what, why a difference of, why, where does that come from? We're naming this pattern. Why is it called a difference? direct link between those words. So a difference is, the difference of two things is there, is when you subtract one from the other. Difference of two, to what? What are both of these? Square. Square, square. they're both square. Isn't x squared a square? Yeah. yeah. It is, okay, x squared is a square, so two squares. Okay. Um, Let's, let's try to expand this a little bit. We're getting a little... Where do you want? My homework. Oh, homework? Uh, I'm just trying to talk to the remote. Goodbye. Okay. Um, I might be back. I might not. You might be back? I might be back. Oh, you might be back. You might be back. Okay. Yeah. Let's hope for your back. Where are you going? And good. Back and good. <laughs> um, what about this? 
Okay, let's let's broaden this a little bit. Get a little bit um, like beyond this section, and say, what about like x squared minus eight? Does that fit? No. No, not exactly. Why not? No square root. Because eight doesn't have a square root. That's like a perfect square root, like you said. It's not a perfect square. But does there exist some number out there, regardless of what it is, what it looks like, that will multiply by itself and give you eight? It is. What's it look like? Uh, like a decimal, right? We don't want to write that thing down. It'll be a decimal that goes on forever and never repeats. It's an irrational number. Well, let's say like you had your calculator, you want to find out what that number was. How would you do that? Eight, and then hit the square root button. The square root of eight, right? That's what that number is called. The square root of eight. So how about if we did x plus the square root of eight times x minus the square root of eight? That's the number that multiplies by itself to get eight. And if we uh, do eight times the square root of x minus eight times the square root of x, we get no x term. Does that make sense? The difference of two squares, maybe not a difference of two perfect squares, but it's a difference of two squares. Square root of eight squared and x squared, yeah? When, like, when you multiply the, how would you get the eight though if you got the squares around the eight in the side of the thing? Well, What's the square root of um, 16? 8, or 4. 4. Why? Because 4 times 4 equals 16. Because 4 times 4 equals 16, right? Mm -hmm. Well, what's 4? 4 is the square root of 16, right? So I could just the same, right? Square root of 16 times the square root of 16. A number that when you multiply it by itself gets 16 times a number when you multiply it by itself gets 16. That oh, would have to okay. get you 16, wouldn't it? Taking that number that when you multiply by itself gives you 16, we're multiplying it by itself, we should get 16, same with 8. You multiply the square root of 8, a number that when you multiply by itself you get 8, times that same number, you should get 8. Okay, I'm going to move that down. Okay. I'm just going to move it up, I'm not going to get rid of it. Okay, so that works, that like fits, right? It's not a perfect square, but it is a square, it does have a square root. What about x squared plus 25? Now, it is a perfect square. What's, it, what's different about this? It's a plus. It's a plus. plus. It's a sum, not a difference. OK. Now, sum of squares, is that a thing? Sure, there's a sum, and they're both squares, so we certainly can write it down. The question is, does it factor? No. Why not? Because it'd be like x squared plus and x plus 25. Oh, if you tried to factor it in such a way that you got two numbers that multiply to 25, yeah. it would have to be either, come on, it would have to either be a 5 and another positive 5 to get 25, or a negative 5 and a negative 5 to get a positive 25, but neither one of those is going to add to get 0x. You're either going to get positive 10x or negative 10x. What do we do? The, huh? Well, the square root of 25 is 5. Yeah. 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 Well, the trick there, though, relied on the still being negative because we get a positive one and a negative one. And so they'll add to make 0. But here we need two positives and two negatives to multiply to make a positive. There is a trick to, to make this work, but it, this is a little bit beyond this section, this is way beyond this section, where we have to use imaginary numbers to do this. Okay. Like no. that? No, I don't want to imaginary numbers. Like that? No. No. I think that's so funny. Oh, I get it now, because that's fake. I, I, I use an imaginary number, but I times I is a real number. <laughs> is that real? <laughs> so <laughs> this, this one, you can't factor it unless you use irrational numbers, okay? But it's still real, they're still real numbers. This one you can't even factor with real numbers. You have to use imaginary numbers to factor it. So it's factorable, but not using real numbers, okay? So we'll, we'll definitely put this off for a while. We'll put this off for a little while, uh, put this off for, for quite a while. Are we gonna use that this year? This? Yeah. Um, we, yeah. Depending on who your teacher is. 
I will. I will show that to you. All right, so a difference of two squares. That's why this sticky note here is yellow, because I had a little bit extra to tell you. You didn't need to know this is called a difference of squares to factor it. You just needed to observe that there's a zero there. But now we can give it its name, difference of two squares. Carl choose eight times, or eight. Why did he choose eight and two? Uh, because they both multiply to make 16. Because eight times two equals 16. That's why, because those two numbers we're going to try to find, they're going to multiply to 16. Okay? Don't let this become mad. Don't fade into magic land where you don't know why that's what needs to be the case. When you distribute this to this, all of this stuff to all of this stuff, the, the way we get this constant is the constant times the constant. Nothing else, there's no other like terms that come into it. It's just straight this constant times this constant here. This is this constant when we distribute. Okay. Now, why are 8 and 2 the incorrect choice? Yeah? Because you get 10x instead of 8x. So we need 8x, and 8 plus 2 is not 8. We want 8. So what would be the, the correct choice? Four and four. X plus four and X plus four. This is a yellow sticky. I'm using this as code to, to myself and to you that there's just a little bit more to tell you. You don't have you didn't have to know the name of the special pattern to do the homework to factor it, right? But it's out there and we might as well cover it, because there it is. Can you separate um, X plus four first? That's right. And that's <gasps> What this all hinges on. What, why do we call it what we call it? Why didn't we just do that? During the homework. That's what I was do what? That's what I did. I did that. Did what? Well, well if you were smart, you could have done that. Hey. <laughs> it only happens because they happen to be identical factors, right? And that doesn't happen all the time. It probably, like if we were to randomly pick these, these numbers here, this would happen a lot less often than it didn't happen, right? So that's why we don't do it very often. It's only when these two are identical. Multiply something by itself, that's the definition of squaring, I think. 
Um, and because this factors this way, the, the first part of this name is that it's a perfect square. Why is it called a perfect square? Why is this called a perfect square? Why is what called? Like the x this. plus 4? Oh. Well, how about this? Why is this called a perfect square? Because it goes in. Yeah, it has a square root. Yeah, it, it is something times itself. That's what a square is, right? You square something, you multiply it by itself. So it's a perfect square. This could be 5 times 5, or 10 times 10, or whatever, you know, whatever this number happens to turn out to be. Uh, so it's a perfect square, but it's not a perfect square like a number, like just 5, not just any old perfect square. It's a perfect square trinomial. What is tri? Three. Three. Nomial. Number. Number. Numbers. Okay, that's what this is. Trinomial. One, two, three numbers. That's a trinomial. If that's a trinomial, what's this? Binomial. Hey, binomial, there's two numbers. What's this? Nomial. Uh, polynomial. Poly means many. Uh, I'm at. Uno nomial. Uno nomial? Uno. <laughs> <laughs> it's a monomial. Oh, yeah, I knew that. Mono, mono. Mono, mono. Mono, mono. Mono, mono. Mono, Monotheistic. Oh. Mono and stereo. Mono is one, mono is one speaker, stereo is, stereo is two speakers. Okay? Um, so that's what it is. It's a perfect square trinomial. It's a trinomial that when you factor it, you get a perfect square. Two identical factors. Okay. Okay. Those are going to be really important in a, in a couple sections from now, okay? When we're, when we're solving more and more complicated quadratics. We're going to want to utilize the perfect square trinomials. Let's look at uh, when is that going to happen. Okay, We're going to look at when that happens, but I'm not going to expect you to look for this pattern every time you get a, a, a something that you're supposed to factor. But uh, first of all, what kind of number is this going to be if, it comes, if it's two identical factors? A perfect square. A perfect square. All right. So um, let's just put it right down here. It's going to be x squared. And then at the end, we're going to have a perfect square, something that's a perfect square, right? Like, uh, a, maybe we'll just use, no, I don't want to use B. A. That, that can be confusing. Yeah. Not a, I don't want to use A, B, or C, X. because a, y. a, B, and C are the coefficients of the standard form, A squared plus B squared Q. plus C. E never gets used. P is lonely. C? I like N. I was going to use M or N. Or E. Okay. Now, n squared, that just means some perfect square, right? It's going to be whatever this number is, it's going to multiply by itself, and it's going to make this perfect square. Okay. And then we're going to have something times x, right? Well, we're going to get this number in front of x by taking this plus this. Right? Get on board there? Yeah. Whatever the square root of this number is, we're going to add it to itself and get this, right? So we're going to get 2 times n n, the number that you square to get this constant. Right. So the book would say, if you're trying to factor a trinomial and it looks like this, it fits this pattern, you have a perfect square trinomial and you can just factor it that way. Well, that's not the best use of perfect, tri perfect square trinomials, because you spend more time trying to figure out if it fits that pattern and then hope that it works. And then if it doesn't, then you just have to factor it like normal anyway. So I just say, factor all of them like normal, and then, oh, hey, this one are going to use that, we do want to pay special attention to the relationship between those two later on. We're going to so use that like today? No, in like maybe a few days. A few days. So write it down? Well, you should write everything down. Yeah, come on, I need a plan. Or print these out after I publish them on the web. Can you sit next to me and paper? All right. No. Well, I'm just kidding. Why are you I'm just kidding. Take care. We want to pick up next time. Okay. So Judith solved this quadratic equation incorrectly. Here is her work. Why are Judas solutions incorrect? Grab your, yeah, the next one. And respond to that. Keep it in mind that I keep that I keep that I keep reiterating to you what a solution is. There's a specific meaning of solution. I want you to keep that in mind as you answer that question.
question one more time and reminding you solution is, has a really specific definition. We've talked about it several times. We'll talk about it again tonight, or tonight, right now. Um, tonight, later on, we'll get to the other ones. We'll talk about it. <laughs> So why, Dakota? Is I'm not so confident. What? <laughs> what? What did you ask? I just asked that question over there, which is probably raising your hand to answer. Oh. <laughs> why are the solutions incorrect? Because you gotta make one. You gotta make them positive. They gotta be equal to zero. And then when you subtract twelve, it's gonna be positive twelve. So the w equals positive twelve. Okay. Because she didn't do the like the procedure correctly, you're supposed to like this should come out to be zero. Yeah. And if you solve that equation, w would be positive twelve. Okay. Oh. So that's one way we can know like oh. we can know <laughs> that that it is the wrong solution, but the, the real reason why it's not the solution has to fit the definition of solution. That's what a solution does. It's a number, or a couple of numbers if there's more than one variable. But in this case, it's a number that when you put it into the equation, it makes the equation true. So if we take this, we put it in the original equation, the original equation is not true. Okay? So because uh, they don't make How do you know a solution when you see one? Yeah, I just kind of asked the same question twice because if once wasn't enough. I really want you to understand what a solution is. If you have a solution that makes the equation, equation true, then you got to do that. So if we were to have done it correctly, we would have figured out, oh, that W is 12, or if this is 0, then W is positive 4. So those are the correct solutions. Those solutions work here, they work here, they work here, they solve all the equations. So those are the right ones. But I, I want to take your t attention away from this, like, oh, it's wrong because you didn't do it right. That's not what a solution is. It's not correct it doesn't work. It does not satisfy the equation. It does not make the equation true. All right, here we go again. Next, take the next ones from your left. Ask them. They should be right. Next step sets both of the factors equal to 80. That's what I'm saying right here. It sets both of the factors equal to 80. Why is this a faulty assumption? I want you to write down why. If a solution is is the right solution, you can put it in and see if there's one just plug it in. That was the previous true. question, right? You gotta make the equation true. Yeah. Do you have to wait until we get back to them? Oh, no. Alright, who's got it? 
an answer no. for us. Why is that a faulty assumption? Right? And what I'm trying to get to is he's saying that this is true, and what he's really saying is this is true, so this is true. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, because like R doesn't equal R plus two, and they're both the same thing. Um, that's true, but if we go back. We just said w minus 12 equals 0. Here's the thing. What we're really saying here is 4, not and. Right? This or that. So I mean, we could, oh, we could fix that issue. Right, it even says that. It says or. It's not saying that they're the same thing at the same time. It's not saying that. It's not saying that they're equal to the same thing at the same time. Well, that's, that's the case for every one of these. Yeah, but in that one, it just means one plus two is equal to one. OK. Because it's, it's not two binomials. It's a non-lineal and a binomial. And it throws everything off. We could make this a binomial by doing, like, um, erase that, and make this r plus what? Zero. Zero. Right. Now it's binomial. Looks like all the other ones. Just doesn't have a, a constant term. And instead, r plus zero equals eighty. It's not the same thing. What he's done is, is taken. He's factored the left side. He factored it correctly. If I distribute the r into r plus two, you get r squared plus two r. And it's equal to eighty. Then he just sets each one of them equal to eighty, which looks a lot like what we do normally. It's just that it equals zero. We set we, we multiply these two together. It equals zero. So we set this equal to zero and this equal to zero. So why can't you leave that here? Just use 80 instead of zero. This is really getting to the root of why we do this in the first place. Why do we factor it and then set it equal to zero? And not just why do we do it, but why, why can we just say that? Why can we say it about zero, but we can't say it about 80? This one is equal to zero. And somehow we can just say this, or we can say this. But when it's equal to 80, I'm telling you, then you can't do that. Right. Let's go back to, to this one. Instead of asking why we can't do that with 80, why can we do that with zero? this equation, which we know is true because we just factored this and they're equivalent. If I distribute this to that, it's going to be the same as this. So they're the same. It's the exact same equation. Here, I'm making two equations out of this one somehow. And somehow that's, that's correct. That has to be true. Why? How can we just say that either one of, one of them has to be zero or the other one has to be zero? The answer is just 12 and 4. Yeah, but. Or you could have made a worked out solution and I can look and see what they did. What? Uh, they don't make the other equation true. What don't? This one uh, also? Uh, no, they only want to do this. True, that's yeah. why. Um, it would make sense that, that uh, Daryl got the wrong solutions because they don't satisfy the equation. The reason why he got the wrong solutions, though, was this step where he said that since this times this equals 80, then this has to be 80 or this has to be 80. When we do that with zero, we're assuming something. But we're assuming something that has to be true. Here, he's assuming something, which 
doesn't necessarily have to be true. Why is it when it's zero, we can say this has to be zero or this has to be zero? It has to be. It's the only way around it. Remember, there's 80 over there. That doesn't. What it makes the equation true? Uh, as true, well, less than well, zero. your answer is pretty much like saying we can do that because we get the right answer. And when we do when we do it with eighty, we don't get the right answer. We want to dig a little deeper, Michael. Because like when you do plug in w equals positive twelve, it's yeah. zero, and then zero times anything else is zero. Okay. Yes. So. You're kind of taking what Dakota said and maybe going a little bit farther. Because when you put 12 in here, right, the, the definition of the solution is that we take, can take 12, put it in here in the original equation, and it works. Well, it should work here, too. When we put 12 in there, we get 12 minus 12, yeah, 12 minus 12 is 0. Okay, and then that last part, what's that last part you said? When this is 0, you're going to multiply this zero. And anything times zero is zero. Can you say that about 80? No. Anything times 80 is 80? No. Wrong. Anything times 78 is 80? Yep. Can I say that because this is 80, this has to be 80? No, it doesn't really. Maybe it is. Can you multiply by 80 and get 80? Yeah. No. By one. Because you multiply by one which doesn't work here. We can't let eight, R be 80 and then this be 1. This isn't going to turn out to be 1. Okay. So yeah, you could multiply by 80 and get 80, but you don't have to get 80 when you multiply by 80. But do you have to get 0 when you multiply by 0? Yeah. yeah. Well, let's go the other way. If you multiply by 0, you get 0. The other way is, if you got 0 by multiplying, what, what does that mean? One of them has to be 0. Is there any other way? No. no. Can you have not zeros and multiply and get 0? That's, that's the whole point here. The assumption that we're making is a safe one because it has to be true. If we got zero, we must have multiplied by zero. That's why we set each of them equal to zero. Not because I told you to do it and you're a good student and remember correctly. It's because you're a good student and you realize I'm using the zero power law. I know that if I multiply two things together and got zero, I had to have multiplied by zero. That's why we do that. And when we go over here and try to apply that logic to 80, I got 80, so I must have multiplied by 80? No, that doesn't make any sense. Okay. Um, so we can say because to get 80, it doesn't mean Well, so what should it be? What, what, sh what can we set each thing equal to if we set it up correctly? How about uh, maybe how do, we, how do we do this problem correctly? Yeah? Subtract 80. So sub why, why subtract 80? Get set to zero. So we get zero, right? So that when we factor it, we get it equal to zero so that we can apply all that logic that we just talked about. So subtract 80. Can you say R is 8? Hmm? Is R just going to be 8? Is R just going to be 8? I don't know. I haven't finished yet. I think, uh, I think R is 8, and R is also something else. Or R can be 8. There's two possible solutions. Two numbers that work. I don't think it's 10. I think it's 9. Um, and how we do that, we factor this. Two numbers that multiply to make negative 80 and add to make positive 2, positive 10, and negative 8. So 0. Yeah, I multiplied two numbers together and I got 0. I must have multiplied by 0. So either this was 0, so that I multiply this by 0 and get 0, or the other one was 0. So this guy here was 0, so that I multiply this by 0 and get 0. So R. Negative 10, R could be 8. It can't be 8. It can't be 0. It can't be 80 that can't be anything other than 0. 
zero is the only one that I can make a definite statement about uh, having gotten that answer. It doesn't work with one, it doesn't work with two, it doesn't work with three. So I don't know what I multiplied together to get one, two, or three, but I do know if I got zero, I did multiply by zero. Okay. This first question is the reason why this sticky is yellow, because it involves a little bit of information that we didn't explicitly discuss. We didn't necessarily have to know it to, to get it done, but we do want to make this connection. We want to I didn't state it explicitly the other day because just from the, the problem and, and the previous equations that you solved, you can um, come to the conclusion, the logical conclusion, that we're going to set this equal to zero, right? We just went to this long, long discussion about, well, it can't be equal to 80. That's not going to work, right? It can't be equal to anything. What's that? But it can't be equal to anything. What do you mean? Any other number other than zero. Yeah, anything other than zero. <laughs> now, now, the problem, the, or, the, or the equation could start out with something other than zero. We just need it to be zero. We need to, like, if it's 80, we need to subtract 80 on both sides, so we have zero over here, like Kevin told us, right? But it starts out as zero. That's just what the problem is asking for, right? The directions tell us that, okay? But you may not get that right off if I don't explain it. So. Let's talk about a function. What's a function? We've talked about it so many times. What is a function? Input and output. Input output machine, factory, right? That's what it does. It takes things in and puts things out. That's what we want to concentrate on in this discussion. But I don't want you to, you know, I don't want to ever want to talk about a function without defining it fully. So it's not just input and output, it's input and output in a specific way. What way is that? For every but there's exactly one output. Exactly one output, yes, okay. So I don't, like, I, I don't want anybody to get the misconception that that ha doesn't have something to do with the function, that has to be true for it to be a function. Um, but we're saying it's a function, <coughs> and the important thing for this is that it, it has input go in and it has out output come out. Okay. So the output is the thing that makes a function a function. Putting stuff into the function, all functions have stuff put into them, right? Zero, one, two, three, four. That's the same for all functions, most functions. Some, some functions maybe you can't put four into or something. But for most functions, they take in the same inputs. The thing that makes them different from each other is the output. Okay. So the value of a function or the worth of a function or the purpose of a function or all these things is what it puts out. Right? And what here represents what this function puts out? input y. and y is the output, right? So the function
function, if we're talking about the function, what the function is worth, we're talking about the output. What's the output? It's zero, okay? The zeros of the function. What zeros the function out? What makes it zero? That's what we're looking for, okay? So the output is now zero, that's what we call zeros, is what, what values of x make it into zero, zeros it out. So we make the output zero, and then we solve like normal. So it's because the directions say the function uh, should okay. be worth zero. Okay. This is going to be like the fourth time we've talked about this. Why did Carol set each of the factors equal to zero? Tell us why. Why did she do this? Why did she set each factor equal to zero? Um, <laughs> okay, so she's here, right? Mm -hmm. And then in the next step, she takes each factor and sets it equal to zero. Why does she make the from here to here? Multiply two things together, and you get zero, so one of them has to be zero. Except thing we, man, I don't know how many times I've said it today, especially in the last two days, because I've done this three times. So. That's like an awesome job. Yeah. So, if we multiply two numbers to get zero, one of the numbers we will multiply by must have been zero. That's called the zero wrong product property. Okay. Let me state the zero product. Pro I've been saying it in lots of different ways over and over, trying to come up with different angles. Here's the clearest, most concise mathematical way we can say it. Okay? It's an if then statement. If a number times another number is zero, then what can we conclude? One number has to be zero. A is zero. <laughs> and if it's not, then B, then B has to be zero. And if it's not zero, then you didn't get zero. You did not get zero if these are both not zero. Okay. So if that is yeah. equal to zero, if that has to be true, then this one of these has to be true. That's how we're finding these solutions. Okay. Well that's it. That's what I have for the quiz. Right? Are there any questions from the homework? No. Oh yeah, 65. Yeah. Word problem? Um, yeah. Okay. Anytime a word problem makes reference to a shape or a physical object, anything that you could possibly like imagine looking at or touching or holding, especially if it's tangible and you can hold it, touch it, look at it, you should draw a picture of it. Okay? So immediately, what's the, the first thing that we can draw just as we read through the, the question? A rectangle. A rectangle, beautiful. A rectangle. That deserves a high five. Yeah. Anybody? Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay. What about this rectangle? Can we quantify? Put numbers to it. It's 100 feet long and 50 feet wide. Okay. Wow. We're just, just drawing out this information. As we get new information, or information seems relevant, we are going to write it down, or put it in the pictures, somehow make note of it. Okay. So next it says, what, the city? Must uh, triple the area. Okay, let's stop right there. Triple the area. So the area is apparently a relevant piece of information. Right? Let's okay. triple the area. So we should probably know what the area is right now. Right. How do we do it? What's that? Length times width is the area. So how many? 5,000 5, square feet. We want to triple it. This is the old one. What do we want the new one to have an area of? 15,000. 15,000. Square feet. Square feet. Okay. Well, that's all we know so far. How are they going to do this? What's their plan? They want to add the same distance to the length and the width. Okay, so here's the length. 
we're going to add a distance. So a dotted line will help me represent that. X? Width. Okay, so we add it to the length, and also well, here's the width. It's going to add on to the width as well. At the same ex exact amount, right? So this will be the new uh, wider width and the new longer length. And it'll be, it'll be looking like this. And we want to find what the area of that to be 15,000. How are we going to find the area of this new rectangle? Factor. Well, we just want we want to write an expression for the area of this new rectangle. How do you find the area of a rectangle? Length times width. Let's, let's start with that. Length times width. The length of the, of the old rectangle was 50, and the, uh, the length was 100, and the width was 50 for the old rectangle. So let's, let's, let's express the length. What's the new length? New length, the, the new length of the, the new bigger skateboard. 100, 100 plus x. 100 plus x. That's our length. What's the width? 50 plus x. 50 plus x more. When we multiply those together, what are we going to get for our area? 300,000. That's the hardest part right there. We wrote the equation. It's harder than it sounds, right? That's what it was like for me. The teacher would get up here, and how do you do this problem well? And then it looks so easy. It's the equation that's the hard part. After that, give me that equation to solve. It's, it's a kind of a tricky one, but I have it now. I can work on it. All right, so it's something that we can do to work towards the solution. Yeah? Distribute. Distribute. Let's do that. 100 times 50 is 5,000. Uh, then we're going to get 100x and 50x, so we'll get 150x. And x squared, I'm just going to write it like this. Because I notice it's a quadratic, and we are used to looking at quadratics in this order. So I'm just rewriting it. All right, so distribute it. Now what? Yeah. Subtract 5,000. 5,000? Subtract 15,000. Why do you do that? Um, so that it's equal to x and then we get the right number. Equal to x? Equal to zero? Zero. Equal to zero. Right. Equal to zero. So now we'll have x squared plus 150x minus 10,000 equals zero. Subtract the 15,000 from both sides. Oh, we got 19,000. Uh, we have a quadratic expression equals zero. How is it in solving this? Numbers are multiplied in negative 10,000 and add to 150. So we're just going to have to. What's that? 175? 75? Let's see. No. Oh. Dang. Okay, 10,000 divided by 75. Oh, that's a decimal. I hope that's not right. I don't want, I don't want to use decimals and fractions. I'm going to avoid it. Right? Well, we know that doesn't work because we know the difference of these two is not 150. You know we need one positive and one negative to multiply about the negative. 200. 200? 200 and like 200. 200 and like 200? And then, and then 50. And then 50? Yeah. Oh. Does that add up to 250? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You bet it does. So x plus 200 must be 0. And if it's not, then x minus 50 must be 0. So x could be negative 200, or x could be 50. Which one of these makes more sense? 50. 50, because we're going to add a distance onto a length and a width. Can't add a negative 50. I guess you could, though. Well, I mean, it'd be weird. In math, but like you can't do it. Well, in life, what would that look like? Well, we'd add negative 200 to this, which means we are going to tear all this up and add it this way. Yeah, and then we're going to tear all this up in this direction. So at, like our, our skate park winds up being over here and, and being the right size. <laughs> so we should use 50 and not negative 200. Okay, so uh, let's pass in our homework. Let's get rolling on this next Wait. subject. Wow. Good job. So the new dimensions of the state party.
Mold the dimensions plus 50 on each side. Add them on top of it. Add them by 250. Or 7 factors are 7 times 1. And 3 factors is 1 times 3. But to get a negative 3, one of them has to be positive and one of them has to be negative. So Dakota showed us that, well, one of them has to be positive and one has to be negative to get negative 3, right? And so, but the thing is, do I put the positive here and the negative here? Or do I put the negative there and the positive there? The way you have it. The way you have it. Okay. How do you know? Because when you multiply it out, right? 
Yeah. That's what you have to do to see if it does work. You have to multiply it out. Here's, here's what I'm trying to show you. It could be a positive one there and a negative three there. It could be a negative one there and a positive three there, right? If I put a, if I put a negative one there and a positive three there, is that gonna make a difference? Is that gonna be different? Yeah. yeah. We'll do it and we'll find out if it'll be different. It will. But not only that, it could be a positive three here and a negative one there. And it could be a negative three here and a positive one there. Those are all the different possibilities here. They'll all be different. Let's do, let's do, uh, let's do uh, three and negative one, and then we'll do negative three and positive one. We'll see how those are different. Okay. Okay. Let's let's go. Seven times, let's see, seven x times x is seven x squared, and three times negative one is negative three. We knew that. Yeah. It's this middle term that becomes different every time you switch this stuff around. So we get seven times negative one, that's seven x, or sorry, negative seven x, and three x. Wrong. Wrong, right. we get negative four x. That didn't work, we get rid of that guy. Nope. You have to do this for every single problem. Does it sound very fun? No, no it sounds uh, terrible. Hold on, hold on. So far. I promise you something better, hold on. Negative three and positive one, let's try that. Well, we still get seven x squared, and we still get negative three, Remember how I said this would work if we didn't talk out of turn a bunch? Yeah. Okay, but what does it change? Well, now seven x times one is positive seven x, and negative three times x is negative three x. It just changes the sign of those. So instead of negative four x, we get positive four x. But that's still not right. No. Okay. Well, then let's try Negative one and positive three. Let's try that out. We're still, we're still gonna get seven x squared and negative three. It's the middle term that's gonna be different. So we get twenty one x and negative x. Oh, we're so close. That's positive twenty x. But we want negative twenty x. So. So we must just switch the one and, uh, and the negative three. And so we'll get negative 21 and positive x. Negative 20 x, positive x. And we finally got negative 20 x. Well, that's how much work it's going to take if you don't pay attention to the way I teach you to do it. OK? So that's where we're, that's where we're sitting. Uh, and this is a fairly simple one. Let me point out why. We need an, this x term times this x term to be this x term. Mm -hmm. That's easy here because 7 is prime. You can only do 7 times 1. But what if it's uh, 6? You can do 2 times 3 and 1 times 6. Yeah. So which is it? And then what if this isn't 3? What if it's negative 12? You can factor lots of different ways. Yeah. Right? So the more ways you can factor these two, the more work you have to guess and check. Like there's no way around it? There is a way around it. I'm going to teach you it to you today. Yeah. You will. Did you eat like three cups of sugar today? Uh, I just want to show you, there's one last view of why we want to learn the slightly weird looking method that I'm going to teach you. Here's why. Because, let's first look at the 15. We know that's going to be either a 3x there and a 5x in this one, or it's going to be an x and a 15x. You've got to multiply to make 15x squared. Two different possibilities already. On top of that, we've got to deal with the 8, the negative 8. That's even worse. 
because this could factor as uh, 2 and negative 4, negative 2, and positive 4. Or maybe the 4 goes over here and it's positive, and 2 is negative, or the 4 is negative and the 2 is positive. Or 1 and 8. 1 and negative 8, uh, negative 1, positive 8, 8 and negative 1 over here, or negative 8 and positive 1. So you try all of those. Maybe none of those work. Maybe one of them does. Maybe you're lucky one of them does. Okay? Well, then you have to do the same thing. None of those worked. You would have to take all of these, and that gives them too much. And you have to try them all in this scenario as well. Okay, so if you're really, really unlucky, how many times did you have to guess and check? A whole lot. A lot, a lot. How many? One, two, three, four, Sixteen different times you had to guess and check. There's a little bit of, you know, you could be a little smart about it. You can see when we did this one, switching these, these signs just changed the sign of the middle term, right? If, you know, we got positive 20x one time, so if we switch the signs, we know we were going to get negative 20x. So, we could try these, and, and we know we want a 2. And if we try one of these and we wind up getting a, a positive 2, we know we can switch the signs. Like if these two gave us a positive 2, we can switch the signs and get a negative 2 like we did. But still, it's a lot. It's like maybe maybe brings it down to 8. So a better way is what we want. Okay? I don't know. I'm trying to sell you on this. I'm a salesman right now because if we don't learn this way, this is what we have. If I just start telling you how to do it, you're going to say, oh, this is hard. But I'm showing you how it's much harder if you don't learn what I'm about to say, Michael. Isn't it 18 ways? Okay. Since the two bottom, you got to do those. Huh? Well, the, the, like these two numbers stay the same. Yeah. Each different scenario is just this, 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 this. Yeah, there's this. eight different scenarios, and then you got the two bottom ones. So it'd be but the two bottom ones things. are just the place where you put these things. You put the 2 and the negative 4 in here, and you multiply it out to see if it works. That's one time. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 more is 16. It's okay. These two, like this isn't anything. This isn't, doesn't mean anything until I put these in. Right? Okay, so a better way. We want a better way. We also want a pen. 15x squared. Call this the A C method. That's my name for it. Okay. And and here's why. Because we have A x squared plus B x plus C. Hopefully that's not something weird. You've heard that before. It's the standard form quadratic. Okay. And it's, we're going to uh, factor A x squared plus B x plus C, where A is something other than one. Like A is not one. If it's one, we just do what we've been doing. Right, it's called the AC method because we're going to do this. First, this X doesn't mean X like that. It's just a way to organize our information. we got four pieces of information here. One here, one here, one here, one here. All right. The first one is going to be up here or down here, however you want to do it. But I put it up here, and it's A times C. What's A in this expression? 15. And what is C? Negative eight. Negative eight. Negative eight. What is a times c? I need a calculator for that. Fifteen times negative eight. Oh, my calculator broke. Sixteen times negative eight is negative one hundred and twenty. Negative one twenty. All right. So that's that's what we're looking for. Right. So what we've done here is we've taken all the factors of fifteen, multiplied them by about all the factors of negative 8. Like we've mushed all the factors together into one mega number. Okay? So all the factors of 15 and of negative 8 are in this number. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Down here we're going to put B. What's B? Negative 8. No. Negative, negative 2. two. Negative 2. Okay. So we've got this big number that has all the factors of 15 and negative 8 in it. And why we wrote neg negative 2 down here is we're going to Divide. write two numbers that add to negative 2 and multiply to negative 1 twice. Say it again. 
We're gonna, melt, we're gonna put two numbers here, then multiply the negative 120 and add the negative two. Go shorter, pick up your calculator, start finding those two numbers. 12 and 10. Thank you. You're a genius. 12 and 10. Oh, we want negative 2, right? We want negative, negative 12. 12. Negative 12. Okay. All, of, all the stuff that we did was just to find these two numbers. All right? Now, these two numbers, these two numbers add to negative 2, but they also uh, they are factors of negative 120. Which means that this guy has some of the factors of 15. It also has some of the factors of negative 8. This one also has like the other factors of 15 that this one doesn't have, and the other factors of 8 that this one doesn't have. Right? So these two numbers, they add to negative 2, but they're also completely made up of factors of 15 and of negative 8. Okay? That's useful in this next step. Okay, 15x squared. What we're going to do is take negative 12 and just rewrite it as negative 12x plus 10x, or as 10x minus 12x. I'm going to put 10x plus 10x minus 12x. I'm going to do it this way. If you want to do it the reverse way, negative 12 first and 10 second, and prove to yourself it's going to be the same, it'll be a little bit harder because you're going to have to just use the concepts that I'm telling you about. But totally doable. And exactly the same thing. This next thing is called factoring by, excuse me, grouping. Factor by grouping. Factor by group because we're going to group them. We're going to group these two. We're going to group these two. I'm using circles because they are not mathematical symbols. Hopefully, nothing there to confuse you. I'm going to use parentheses because that could get confusing. Just circling them, just trying to draw your eyes toward these two and separately to these two. What we do in this first group of two, do these two terms have common factors? Five. Five. Except the biggest one. Yeah? Five? Yeah. Anything else? Three. How about an X? Yeah. We have a factor of X. This term has an X factor. This term has an X factor? Yep. Yeah. All right. So then we just factor it out. We write fill in parentheses so that we distribute the 5X. We want it the same. 3X. Three three X. X. Yeah. Three. Yeah. 3X plus 2. That's a number. What do these two have in common? Negative 4. Very good. Negative 4. I like with, if the first one's negative, I like to make the thing that I factor out a negative thing. Okay. Negative 4, and we get, big surprise, 3x plus 2. I've seen this before. Yeah, I've done this before. Done this before? Yep. That's good. Okay. Now, here's the part that people struggle with the most. Because up till now, like, we can do this a couple times, it becomes easier and easier. This next thing I want you to do, I, if you just write the next step, you'll, you'll be able to like, see a pattern and write the next step without any problem, but you might not quite get why it's working. I want you to pay attention and, and try to internalize why it's working. Okay. To understand it, let's just go back here. 15x squared plus 10x. How did we go from here to there? Factor it out. Factor it out. We took out a factor, a common factor of 5x. So if I distribute the 5x back into here, it gets that. Now, two terms, common factor. Now we have two terms, two terms, common factor. 3x plus 2 is a common factor. Just like 5x was a common factor here, 3x plus 2 is a common factor between these two. So we're going to factor it out. Are you just about to tell me what to write? I think so. I don't want that. Hold on. Um, no, go ahead. I'm going to go in the other order. This is the same thing. You're right. Oh, yeah. You're right. Times 5x minus 4. Okay. Like I said, if you just want to see the pattern, oh, this thing I write to the left. And then this thing I put with this thing and put it in the other parentheses. Sure, you can, you can do it and get the right answer. And it's factored. We're done with factoring. Right? Multiply these out, you're going to get this. Oh, that's what we're going to talk about that right now. Okay. All right. Let's go back to this again and talk about this again. If I distribute the 5x into these two 
I get this, right? Yeah. It's got the definition of factoring something out. A monomial, right? Factor out a common monomial. Uh, here we get the same kind of a thing. It's just a common factor that's a, a binary. Okay, I'm the same factor. Think about it this way. If I distribute this in, I get this. If I distribute this whole thing, right? Don't mul multiply it like normal. Don't distribute it out completely. Just take that whole parentheses and distribute it into this parentheses. This whole thing times 5x. What does that give you? It gets to 5x times that whole thing. 5x times that whole thing. Just distributing this, this big parentheses to both of these terms. Distribute the 3x plus 2 to the negative 4. Negative 4 times 3x plus 2. Just distributing the parentheses into the other parentheses. Does that make sense? Okay. If half of you said yeah, then that's, that's pretty good. We're factoring out this common factor of 3x plus 2 outside the parentheses and, and then saying if we distribute it in, we'll get the same thing. We're doing that just like we're saying if we were to distribute this 5x into both of these terms, we would get this guy right here. So is it always going to be like the first part of the parentheses then? So the, okay, so you know the green thing that you circled? Yeah. That's the inside the parentheses. Right. Is it always going to be inside the parentheses? Yes. That's, the, that's concentrating on like the pattern and this is what I write down. Right. And that, that'll get you there, but I would like you to think about that. To understand it, right? Huh? Yeah. To understand it. If, if you don't get anything other than, well, these parentheses go here, and then this yeah. and this go together in this other parentheses. That's what I wanted to do. That, yes, is true. The reason why is because this is a, a common, yeah, I want, I want you to get the deeper meaning. If you don't, it's not the end of the world. You do. I'm sure there's somebody else who doesn't, so I'm going to say it one more. This is a factor of this thing. This is a factor of this thing. And we're factoring out that common factor. Say, if we were to distribute this back into these parentheses, we would get this. If I distribute this 5x into these parentheses, I get this. And distribute this negative 4 into that, I get this. Which, when I put these together, is the same as that. It's all, it's math. Right? It's not magic. And it's not guessing and checking. And trust me, when the first coefficient and the constant have lots of factors, this is just way faster than yesterday. Michael? Just have a sheet. I will.